Blow, we're starting off with uh, the French political right, a little bit divided since uh, Francois Hollande became president, but one man, he wants to be president. That's right, that's Francois Fillon, another Francois. Uh, and yesterday he was in uh, Japan, actually, speaking to journalists, when he said, I will be a candidate no matter what, and this is getting a lot of attention in the French press today, especially in the regional press, actually. We're going to take a look at the front page of Normandie. There you see him, a very determined-looking Francois Fillon, with that quote, quoi qu'il arrive, so no matter what. Now, a lot of papers are pointing out that this is an unusually early declaration on his part, that he wants to be the candidate for the UMP party, the opposition party on the right, and a lot of papers are pointing out that, well, he's going to face tough competition from one of his bitter rivals, which is uh, Jean-François Coupé, who's the, actually the current party leader, and he also could face opposition from Nicolas Sarkozy if ever he wants to make a political uh, comeback. So Lico, another regional paper, points out, well, cracks are starting to appear within the UMP party because uh, François Fillon's declaration could, well, bring further divisions within the party. Uh, and in fact, Libération goes and interviews supporters of both Coupé and Sarkozy to see how they feel about François Fillon's declaration. And it's, uh, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. Some people say that this is a scandal, that uh, François Fillon is thinking more about his own career than what's happening in France. Others are saying, look, this is not such a big deal. This is, first of all, this is very premature. Uh, anyway, the UMP is going to hold a primary in 2016, and that's something that François Fillon just can't get around. And uh, Le Figaro, unsurprisingly, also very interested in this story. That's right. They're talking about François Fillon's determination uh, for 2017. Uh, and in their editorial, Le Figaro says, look, François, François Fillon is indeed a legitimate candidate, just like Jean-François Copé is a legitimate candidate, and just like Nicolas Sarkozy is a le legitimate candidate. Now, what's uh, important to know, though, is that, is, is, is that in four years, the economic situation, according to Le Figaro, is probably going to be a lot worse than it is now. So whoever is the candidate in 2017, they're they're not going to be able to beat around the bush. bush. They're going to have to step up to the challenge and bring around real France, uh, real change to France, or else uh, France will stop being the, quote, Garden of Eden that it is. Gosh. OK. Uh, Liberation next, the uh, centre-left paper. Uh, they head to Syria and allegations of chemical weapons use. That's right. They investigate further the the uh, allegations of the use of a, a gas called sarin. So they go uh, sur les traces du sarin, so on the traces of sarin. And they actually send reporters to Aleppo, uh, one of the n uh, neighborhoods that was, uh, well, reportedly attacked uh, by chemical weapons on April the 13th. And you see here a photo from a, a screen grab, actually, from a video of, of one of those alleged uh, victims. So Libération interviews uh, witnesses and doctors, and they describe symptoms, well, that are very compatible with a sarin gas attack, so foaming at the mouth and nose of the victims. Uh, and Libération says this is not formal proof but it does seem to be as evidence that there were these punctual uses of chemical weapons. Who is responsible for this? Liberation does not have an answer. There have been uh, a lot, all sorts of uh, uh, people th thrown around, whether it's the uh, regime or uh, the rebels. Uh, Liberation says that's unclear. What is clear, however, is that this is a nightmare situation. So what is the international community doing? Uh, this was, once upon a time, the red line that a lot of people talked about. Liberation in their editorial says, the truth is that nobody wants to intervene in Syria, especially not Barack Obama. It seems like the international community is, once again, looking for a diplomatic solution. This is a good thing, according to Liberation. Uh, they say there's a little bit of hope this could work out. One thing that they say, though, is that the tyrant, so Bashar al-Assad, should not be allowed to the negotiation table. OK, we head to L'Humanité, the communist paper next. I'm glad you are. Spotted this story, a scandal involving Mao's granddaughter. That's right. Her name is Kung Dong Mei. Uh, she's about four, in her 40s. Uh, and on Thursday, her name appeared on a list of millionaires. And this has sparked quite the scandal in <laughs> China. Now, this is according to a magazine called New Fortune in China. And she is 242nd on this list of, of millionaires. Her fortune is estimated at 620 million euros. Uh, so this has sparked what, a wave of Allegations criticism. Allegations of champagne socialism. That's right, champagne socialism. On the internet, uh, a lot of people have been mocking her, uh, calling her very hypocritical and saying that, well, she her, she lives a life that's very far off from her <laughs> grandfather's ideal. Uh, also, on top of that, uh, according to this article in New Fortune magazine, she has three children. So this is also something that's not in line with Mao's one child, a uh, single child policy. <laughs> so yes, she's uh, well getting quite the beating on the internet uh, these days uh, in China. Uh, especially because, well, officially, the government still supports uh, Mao's uh, cultural revolution. Florence Filemino, thank you very much for that look through the French press.